and locking Moreto Bliss. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Cyrus Rod is my name, and you're watching and locking Moreto Bliss. I am here to continue with Paraning Redefined. The last time we were here in the last episode, we talked about Paraning Redefined. And many of you have all these feedbacks, and you are really humbled at this approach towards Paraning because most of you do not even have a clue what Paraning is. And it's quite amazing. But when you understand, like we said in the last episode, you cannot be able to parent successfully until you've been parented by God. Because parenting begins with God. He's the origin of parenting. He's the source of parenting. And without Him, you cannot be able to succeed in parenting. Yeah, you cannot. And tonight, I am just so excited and just so happy to be here to continue with parenting redefined. Parenting redefined. And to be able to proceed, I have my usual suspect in the house. And I will give her the opportunity to introduce herself. So together with me, just watch and listen to my usual suspect introducing herself. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor to be here, Mr. Cyrus. Always an honor to be here at yeah. uh, Fairway Boutique. Fairway Boutique Hotel. The place to be, beautiful place for Absolutely. all of us. Great to be here and um, talk about parenting and, and I like the feedback. I really did like the yeah. feedback that we got from, uh, from the people who are watching. In the first episode. Yes, in the first episode. That is very good. So good to have you here. Thank you. Winfred Zizinga, Dr. Winfred Zizinga. Yes, we're having all this at our beautiful Fairway Boutique Hotel. Fairway Boutique Hotel. Now, Winfred, by the time we took a break, we're here to talk about parenting redefined. We want to continue this episode, parenting redefined. We made it clear that unless you've received from God, from the origin of parenting, that is it. you cannot parent. No, you can't. And uh, of late, before we actually go forward, you receive it from God, and then you're able to pass it on. That is it. And we made it clear that actually parenting is about being able to demonstrate unconditional love towards your children you get it towards your children that in the end they are able to see the other god true in other words i receive from god and when i receive this unconditional love i'm parented by him then when i receive it i'm able to demonstrate the same pour it out into my wife pour it out so parenting begins with the man with the man parenting doesn't begin with the woman. No. Parenting begins with the man. With the man. Because the entire family begins with the man. Sure. And when we say parenting begins with the man, this is something most of our viewers don't have a clue about. No. But there's such a video that has gone viral. I don't know if you've watched it, Winfred. This video shows somebody took it. A sudden, a man had one of his trawlers and wanted to put that thing inside. <laughs> now you're laughing already. I guess you've watched it, have you? I watched it yesterday, actually. Thank you. <laughs> wanted to fix that thing inside the, the boot. boot of his car. Of his car. He tried, he was messing it up. He tried, and it wasn't working. Right. And another man was passing by. He joined to help, him. to help him. He was just getting it from bad to worse. And that now there were two men. Yes, and, and the ones the, filming. And the ones filming. Had no clue what to do. Had no clue what to do. They so they couldn't help. Say, oh my goodness, what is going on? And then a third one joined in. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they were literally sweating over that. That is true. That is true. Now. Trying Winfrey. to fold a buggy. Put it together. Put it together. That stroller. That stroller. Mm -hmm. They got it. Put it together. They failed. Three men. Now, I have people saying. I would say five like men. Because there was the ones who were filming, filming. But could not help because they had no clue. Five men. So all the men. Mm -hmm. All the men. In that place, yep. all the men could not, fold that, could not fold that stroller. Could not fold it. Five fathers 
could not fold this trawler. And in their conversations, they were going, my wife always does it. My wife always does it. My wife always does it. Now, this is where the problem is. Fathers, we need to understand when it comes to parenting. Some people say, can you imagine? Because as they struggled, one woman, <laughs> one woman yep. jogging, yep. passed by, so all oh, these men struggling to just fold up the stroller, put it together, with one hand. and she just came with one hand. These guys will... <laughs> One woman with one hand just did this, and the whole thing went whoosh, finished. And some of them are like, women are amazing. No, I don't <laughs> want to see it that way, that women are amazing. The reality is not about that women are amazing. True, women are amazing. Yeah. But the truth is this. We as fathers have totally failed in parenting. We think strollers belong to women. That's true. We think women, our role as fathers is to bring food, pay school fees, bring, and we are finished. Provide, and we are finished, and we call it parenting. Winfred, what do you have to say? I mean, th th this guy struggled. I mean, with one stroller, five men could not put it together. And the message is very clear. Now, your perception of how God parents you yeah. is what you will transfer to your children. Thank you. How do you perceive God? Which box have you put him in? You know, in today's world or generation, yeah. we box God. We fit him into our own understanding. Yeah. We fit him in, into who we are. Yeah. He's bigger than who we are. Far bigger. Far bigger. Yeah. Now, your perception, if you think mm. God parents you that way, yeah. then you don't know him. I don't know him. And that is what you're going to pass on. Yeah. That is how you will parent. That's very true. I've had parents, I've had fathers say, even God doesn't give me everything I want. You don't know him. You don't have a clue. And, and let him who glories. Glory in this that they know. That they know him. Jeremiah 9.24. <laughs> that you know him. That you know him. But we don't know him. And we are passing around as though we know him. Mm -hmm. And when we teach falsehood to our children. Yeah. We are denying them an opportunity to know him. And that is the dysfunction they will carry on. It is, I call it a dysfunction because it happened in the garden. Yes. And it started with the man. We lost the connection. Thank you. We have a disconnect. Yes. Now your perception of God may carry a disconnect. Yes. You are an improved version of yourself. Of the fallen self. Of the fallen self. Yeah. You know nothing. Mm -hmm. You because you do not know him. The father is kind. The father is gracious. The father provides. The He's father long suffering. Long suffering. He He's chastises. Patient. He's patient. He, he heals broken hearts. That is who a father is. Yes. He doesn't only throw manna from heaven and say, eat. Take care of yourselves. Care of yourself. What do you want from me? And this is the problem that we have as, when it comes to parenting mm -hmm. as men. We think the real thing about parenting as men is drop the manna and walk mm -hmm. away. Drop mm -hmm. the manna. This shows men that are brokenhearted, mm -hmm. men that don't have love, men that don't know what love is <clears throat> because... Winfred, when you know what love is, <clears throat> amen, when you know what love is, you want to be there, teach your child everything. You want to connect with your child. But because you're not connected with God, you're having a problem connecting with your child because you already have a problem connecting with your wife. You can't keep preaching, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you already have a problem connecting with your wife. So this is where you find that most of the fathers, what we call fathers, don't have a clue. Take a look at this. 
when it comes to achievements, when children achieve, when children achieve, yes. guess who is always mentioned 99% of the times? It's the mother. The mother. Yeah, every time, every time you... you I thank my mother. Yes. My mother was there for me. Mm -hmm. I thank my mother. I thank my mother. Mm -hmm. I thank my mother. Then you're asking, where were the fathers? Mm -hmm. And this is where the fathers begin saying, you took the children away from me. You manipulated the children to hate me. The children don't love me because of you. No, and let me yet tell... And I was providing. And yet I was providing. This, people need to understand this very clearly. Fathers, giving money, you can give money without loving, but you cannot love and not give. Now, Pastor Cyrus, just, just pause a bit. God gave these children manna from heaven. He gave them quails. But what he longed for most was relationship. Thank you. It was about connection. It was about the connection. It, in fact, he longed for the connection so much that he had given them the law, the instructions, but it didn't work out. And he said, now I'm going to connect with them first before I can talk to them. I'm going to connect with them before I can talk to them. And this is something many parents forget. Many parents will complain and say, she doesn't listen to me. She doesn't understand me. She's never. But we don't understand that there is no connection. When there is no connection, children find it hard to listen to instruction. When Adam disconnected, yeah. look at the children that he had. Yeah. There still was a disconnect. Because of the disconnect between Adam and God. Exactly. And it flowed down to Adam and his wife. Because this is what Adam said. The woman you, you gave me. That is it. The, the rift started. As long as you blame your wife. It continues. It I have had on. a man who I named Cain. Yes. Now the woman is no longer seeing a man mm -mm. in Adam. Now she says, I have heard a man by the help of God. Mm. By the help of God. Now she has turned to God. And now she says, now I realize there is a man. Mm. And because there was a disconnect from the top, even the man she heard was full of anger and wrath and didn't know what love is. Now, had the relationship been restored, there would be no strife in the family. That's the first strife we, we read about. Absolutely. And in that way, uh -huh. that we, how, if I may ask a question, how different is it from today's parenting? It's the same. It's the same. And this is where we miss it. Because <clears throat> when it comes to today's parenting, what happens is you have a husband and wife that are not connected. Mm. They're having sex, but they're not connected. They are having children and they're not connected. And the man, the, why is it that way? Because the man is disconnected from God. I usually tell men, <clears throat> some of them get mad. That the whole problem in your family, in your home, you see, some of us men love to play victim. You get it? A lot of the men play victim. Well, say, you see, you want me to love a woman. I mean, I'm a man. I, I don't know those feelings. I don't know. No, you're, you're a broken man, your heart, you're full of pain. And so you can only give what you have. So at this point you have pain yes. and pain is what you're going to give. And you can't reach out to be helped so somebody can guide you. For now, all you have is pain. Adam had pain, never healed, never overcame it by going back to God and saying, I need your help. He rather thought, if I'm going to manage this whole scenario, this garden, I better name the woman. He thought naming the woman is going to help him manage the garden. I, I better be self-made. And I'll be self-made. Mm. So he names the woman. Mm. But when he names the woman, that means he's saying, 
I cannot acknowledge that we are equal. You see, in parenting, this is something people forget, especially us. I'm a man, so I'm going to speak on behalf of the man. We forget that God's plan was equality. You can say that again, Pastor Cyrus. We men forget that God's plan was and still is equality. Because in Genesis 127, it said, hey, I've created man and woman in my own image. They're equal, that they may have dominion. They're all equal. You get it? So God's plan is what? Equality. In fact, no man is supposed to get married if they don't acknowledge equality. Genesis 2, 20, 22, 23. And the man said, this is flesh of my flesh, bone of my bones. She shall be called woman. The revelation had come to him. The revelation of equality had come in. Now, Pastor Sarah, if we pause for just a minute, the revelation yeah. had come in. Yeah. Now, if we fast forward to where we are today, yeah. how often do we allow the revelation of who God is to come in? No, we don't need him. We don't need God. I got a job. I'm making a lot of money. Who's God? God is for the weak. That's what we say. God is for the poor. Well, that means that you are dependent on yourself. Yes, ma'am. You will never at any one time do anything right. Thank you. Never. You see, this is what happens. Men do things believing they are right. The Bible says when there was no leader, each man did what appeared right in their own eyes. In other words, this is what we do. I don't believe you're equal to me. What appears right is I put a name on you, I put a tag on you to pull you down so that you're not equal to me. And if you're not equal to me, then I can rule over you. Now, most men believe it is right to rule over a woman. Now, that is why he gives them over to their best minds and thoughts. And they never get out. And they never get out and they never get it. They're so afraid. They're living in fear. They think if a woman is equal to me, then who I, I will lose this home. I will. They want to control a woman. But God has not given you power to control a woman. No, he hasn't. The, the thing is, God is so gracious. And that's yeah. the love of a father. Behold, yeah. I stand at the door and knock. There is still hope for There's that man hope. and woman out there parenting today. There is still hope. Now, the revelation, the revelation of bone of my bones. The flesh of my, my flesh. The revelation the equality. of... Of I am a son of the yeah. Most High. Meaning you are a child. Of the Most High. Of the Most High. He, he parents me. He parents me. He parents me. Gives me the ability to steward what he has given me. Yes. So the world can see this unconditional love of God through me. Let me glory in that that I know him. That I know him. Let that be the testimony you leave your children. Let that be the legacy that you leave your children. It, it gives me joy and yet it pains me. I read stories of, of people whose fathers have passed on, on Father's Day, yes. but they were men. Yes. A person says, I celebrate my dad. He's in glory. He was a man. He was a man. He proved himself. And this manhood is all about love. Love. I read, last year I read about a gentleman who said, my dad died at 12, when I was 12. Yeah. And by the time he died, he had told me or told me everything that I know who to be today. Yeah. He bathed him, he washed him, he took him to school, he taught him, he loved his that's, mother. That's the love now. Now, you've mentioned something. Now, that man parented only up to the child being 12 years old. But by then, the child had become a man. 
Now take a look at this. At 12, Whoa. because the father was a man. The father knew parenting. The father realized that actually this is how parenting is going to be. You said, loved the mother. Loved the mother. Now, Winfred, do you realize research has just established this truth? That a child whose mother is stressed and happy, depressed, struggling, grows, find, finds it so hard to develop and grow the way they should physically and emotionally. This is evidence. A child whose mother is depressed, stressed, and struggling, you get me? Will not develop the way they should develop. And that means who's going to stop and help stop the mother? What causes mothers to struggle and stress 95% of the times? The absence of daddy. Thank you. Of the husband. The absence of the husband and the absence of the husband's love leaves the mother to struggle through. Father, you are killing your children when you don't love their mother. Because when you parent, it begins with me, I love the mother, and then I love the children. Absence does not mean away. Because no, some no. are very physically present. Physically absent, no. Some are very physically present, but you are not around. You are not present. Because you don't love the children. You don't love their mother. You only love yourself. You only think about soccer. You see, soccer and sports and bars and concerts and hanging out with your bros. You call them boys, expensive cars. Toys. You see, when a man does not, has not been parented by God, he doesn't know love. So they never outgrow playing. True. As kids, they played with cars. Now, as the adults, they grow up and start not only even playing with cars and gadgets, they play with women. Oh, boys. Because they never know the boundaries. They never outgrew. They were boys. Their own fathers were never there, never loved them, never showed them what it means to love, to outgrow certain things. So now they played with the little curs, with the little bowls. Now they are 40 years. They are 25. They're still playing. Now they've graduated. They play with human beings. Because they don't know love. When you don't know love, you're going to play with human beings. That is true, Pastor Cyrus. When we relate back to God as the Father, yeah. look at the disciples and, and in the New Testament. They talk about milk. Thank you. Then they talk about meat. Yeah. Meaning you have been weaned off, off, the milk. off the milk to getting to the bone, to the meat, yes. to chewing. Meaning you have teeth yes. to chew. Now, that is what God does, even for us. He wins us off. He says, now that is enough for that level. Now, at this level, this is what you ought to be doing. Because you have people looking at you. You have people depending on you. You have people relying on you. Now, you get what I'm that, that, that comes from you getting to the realization of Daddy God. He is my father. He is my help. He is the grace that I need to do the things that I need to do. I cannot parent. I can only parent as much as I am willing to be parented by God. You said it so well. I can only parent as, as far as I am willing to be parented by God. Because that's the only time we receive love, and love is what we ought to give. Now, Pastor Saras, let me touch a subject that is sensitive when it comes to giving and, and tithers. Yeah. God talks to you about giving. Yeah. And you remind him about how little this tiny thing is. And you, you, today, like I said earlier, we box God. 
and fit him into our carnal minds, he will understand why I disobeyed him. Oh, oh, oh. We know what we are doing and we're doing it in rebellion. But do you know what we say? He will understand. Now, he will understand. We carry it on. We want our children to be better than that. Oh, no. Why we are living in rebellion. But we want our children to be so good at obedience. Now, we can only parent as far as or as much as we are obedient to our father. Ladies and gentlemen, you had it. You can only parent as far as you are obedient to your father God. If you rebel against him and you expect your children to be obedient, I'm telling you, God in his mercy may come and meet them on his own, but you will become a reject. You will become a reject before your children. And I'll be right back in a minute. And locking Moreto Bliss. Unlocking Moreto Bliss. We'll be back. You're still watching Unlocking Moreto Bliss with Miss Iris Rod. And it's always a pleasure to be here and to minister to you that are watching Nigeria. That's West Africa, Malawi. That's Southern Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, DRC, Rwanda, Burundi, hey, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, South Sudan. My Lord, I'm glad. Marita Bliss is spreading the love of the world. And we are still here talking about parenting. And I'm with Winfred right here on set. We are showing you parenting redefined. I know you've not heard parenting taught like this before. You've not had it. But it's been redefined by the grace of God. And so before I took a break, we just say, as long as, as far, how far you go with your obedience to God is how far you will be able to parent. How far you go is how far you're able to parent the children. And this talk you mentioned that uh, God understands. Let me make it so clear to all our viewers. The only thing God understands is when you obey him. Rebellion is you understanding. What happened to Saul? That's what happened to Saul. You see, thank you for bringing Saul. Most of us, we will rebel against God because we are very, very result-oriented. We want results. That's it. Results make us look good. They validate us. Yes. Now, if results validate you, it shows how you don't even know who you are. Take a look. You don't have identity. Take a look at Jesus. When he was doing what God called him to do, he was stripped naked. He was abandoned by all his buddies. Yes. Everybody turned against him. The government turned against him. The religious leaders turned against him. Everyone turned against him. He was stripped naked and crucified. And people said he had no results. At that point, how many believe he had results? None. Nobody. Yet he was obedience oriented. Uh, people may not even see anything that you're doing. But if God sees it, that's enough. As, that's enough. Do not be overtaken by results. Do not be overtaken because you're going to find yourself becoming a people pleaser. Result oriented people are man pleasers. Obedience oriented people are God pleasers. But guess what? He will magnify you and the results. The seeds that you plant yeah. will be oak trees. Oak trees. Oh, man, I love that. Nobody can just move them. They stay forever. 
they can never be ignored. The, the, their significance is right before you. So uh, when, 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 when you look at Saul, he wanted to please the crowds. And he disconnected. He disconnected. He disobeyed. Yes. Now, look at his own child, Jonathan. He wanted Jonathan to do what he wanted. Yeah. Be disobedient. Yes. But Jonathan had the revelation. That the crown had shifted. It had shifted. Yeah. And he positioned himself. He said, I know God's favor is upon you. Yes. I know that you are the king of this. I love what you're saying. It's so possible for God to bypass you, the parent that is being idiotic, the parent that is being rebellious, that is it. God will bypass you because he has a generation to save. He will bypass you and go to your children and he will walk with them. He will leave you outside. Now, this is very dangerous. He has done it many times. He bypassed Saul. I'm a product of that. God had to bypass my father in his rebellion, in his idiotic ways and came to me. And he said, you can do my will. Yeah. I'm not going to struggle with this one. There are many of these that are watching and you're living like you want. You're living in rebellion and you still, you, to you, it doesn't matter. I'm a man. I'm a man. I'm a man. I want to tell you something. God is bypassing you if you don't change. God is bypassing you and will, will meet your children. I never had anybody who taught me to be a man. Who taught me to be a father. No. I never. Because I grew up in a dysfunction of family. No. Nobody taught me to be a father. But God bypassed them. I connected with God. Mm. I accepted what he was telling me. Now that is the hope. For a child living in a dysfunctional home. Thank you. That is the hope for a man who has not parented. Yes. But desires to see better. To see better than what your father was. To, to pass on better. To make a nation greater. Yes. If a nation has many of you. Yes. Because what the, the statistics today have shown us that there's a lot of absent fathers. Absolutely. In other words, those that never play their role as parents so children are being raised by the world thank you children are no longer being raised by parents for crying out loud i have my child and i'm working i'm working hard the father is also working hard and we have let the child be be raised by anybody by the internet by the internet by by the teachers by everyone but Thank God for who he is and his mercy. He always preserves. He preserves. A remnant. A remnant for himself. Yes. Now, pastor, there are young men who have both parents. Yes. But you're fathering them. Many of them. Many of them. They, they have both parents. Who you walked down the aisle. And I fathered them and when you they had fathered, parents. And had parents. Now, when we get to the speeches at the graduations, someone says, you will interpret it for me. They're my biological parents. And I have parents that have raised me to be who I am. Oh, man. Oh, man, if I'm biological at that point, I feel like drowning in my seat. So that is what Brian talked about. We've sired children, so that makes me a parent. No. I am parenting no. because I've sired children. I pay their fees. No. Th th that's, that's what we started with. Five men cannot put a stroller together, fold it, and put it in the trunk of a vehicle. Five men. And one woman comes and one woman comes with one hand and she holds it like this and the whole thing folds. And people think, 
women are special. They have something special. And this is what men are saying, <laughs> trying to run away from their responsibility. Why couldn't five men fold one stroller? They could not fold one stroller because of one issue. They're not participating in parenting. They believe if I am a father, I only bring money and I walk away. As a father, you must participate. You must bathe the baby. You must bathe your children. You must help them get their clothes, learn how to put on clothes, learn how to brush their teeth, learn how to sleep in the, at the right time, learn how to be... That is how you actually are loving your wife too. Now he's going to tell you I had taken the child out. You see, as a father, you don't take children out and you say that settles it. Yeah. You get it? You see, that is how you literally fail. Because you see, when you're so empty and you don't know who you are, you don't have identity, you run to things. You run to pleasures from outside. So the mo because the more you're bored, you don't know how to handle boredom. You don't know how to become creative. You don't know how to deal with God. You're disconnected, so you don't know how to handle this emptiness. So what do you do? You seek entertainment. That's why most fathers, oh, I mean, you're 25, you're 30, you're 40, you're in clubs. <laughs> you're 40, you still hang around buzz. You're 50, you're still hung around buzz. The problem is you're so empty and you're seeking entertainment to fill up your emptiness, to fill up your loneliness. When in actual sense, you need a connection with God to cover your loneliness. So you teach the same to your children. Take them out. Which is wrong. The man would say, I was helping my wife to take the baby out. And the stroller refused. Many men, by the way, that's how they see it. And they'll say, that's why those things are not ours. They are yours, buddy. If he carries his child and you're seated and folding your hands for just a minute, he's helping the wife. He's helping the wife. Yes. When he feeds the child, uh, he's helping the wife. No. no. When he bathes the child, he's helping his wife. Take a look at what God says in the word. And as I think, he says, I even know the number of hairs on your head. And then Jesus says, your father knows the number of hairs on your head. I mean, who can even add one? But God says he knows. He when says... When one falls off, he knows. He knows. That is intimacy. How many of us fathers can be able to tell, this is my child. My child wants this. My child is in need of this. My child is changing color. My child is, I mean, we don't go to class days. I've been, I've attended class days and out of all the parents that are coming in this class days, I've been there and I'm the only man. And then in other instances, we're about two or three men. The rest are women and we talk about parenting. Guys, let me be honest with you. How many times have you gone for class days? For your child's progress check. For your child's progress check. And you be there. I mean, you go there. I've been in school, taken my kids to school, been there for them, paid the tuition, and did everything. How many daddies are called by a school to tell them your child is not well and they actually respond? They call their mother. This must stop because he calls the mother or he picks the mother up and they go to the school. This is a boy. This is not a father. That's behavior of boys. Now, when to the you? medicine is brought and we are instructed two times four, four times six, make sure. if I left home, many women, if they left home early, earlier than the time for taking the medicine, Daddy don't have a clue. Then you call him at 10 and say, did the child tell me, oh, I... Which how, medicine? Which medicine? How many meals? And you are wondering, when you are older... Yeah. Who's going to be connected? Who's going to be connected? Children also know how... If there's anything children will ever understand, until is love. Now... 
Pastor Cyrus, is it wrong when I conclude that because the mother has shown the relationship, she's built the connection. She's built the connection. Mm -hmm. And it is not there with you. Uh -huh. And that connection is what even she may have known from the father. Yes. And yet we started with parenting begins with you. As with me father. as the father. Because you see, Winfred, when you mentioned parenting begins with me. Recently, some people believe that the man is the head of the house. Whether he provides, provides or, not. or not. Now, Winfred, I, I would like our viewers to understand if you're there and you believe the man is the head of the house, whether he provides or not, he's the head of the house. You just believed a lie, you just believed stupidity. Okay? I want to tell you something. Jesus is not the head of the church because he's male. You see, many of us believe a man is the head because he's male. No, a man is not the head because he is male. Man is the head because of his function. You see, the head nourishes the entire body. The head serves the entire body. Everything, for, the, for me to even move my hands, it's the head. If it's cut off, if it's cut off, this whole body cannot. So if the head is not functioning, the body will die. Now we, we have got to a point whereby most heads have not functioned. So now women believe heads are not functional. They are heads because of their gender. Pastor Cyrus, pause just a little bit. We're talking medically. Why is it that you can be on a... Um, life support system yeah. and they say you're brain dead that means like let's just switch off it doesn't matter what <clears throat> what's happening down here but as <clears throat> amen but as long as the brain is dead you're useless you have become dead so you can, somebody can't say well the head is the head whether it functions or it doesn't function no the head is only as good as its function it's got to be alive and kick you've got to be alive and kicking to be able to nourish so if i'm a father and i'm not nourishing but i believe i'm a father because i am the head because i am male and you're female <laughs> I'm male, you're female, so I'm the, I'm the head. No, 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 no. Head means responsibility. Head means function. Now, the, the world, the, many of them will say, well, I'm responsible. Don't I pay their fees? No, if you have not loved them to the point that they can begin seeing God, you are failing as a father. And some of them um, have gone on to say, I'm a gift to you. The mere fact that I'm here, I'm not sleeping out. I am a gift to you. That's I, being dysfunctional. No, I am the head. No, you see, head is not up to you because of your gender. Head is a function. I, you see, now when you realize, <laughs> you see people say, oh, you've got to respect. You're disrespecting men. Winfred, let me show you something. The egos are bruised. Egos are bruised. Yes. What are they doing? What are you doing with ego? It helps me to be a man. No, actually to be a man, you need to go down. Don't to exalt yourself. You need to humble yourself. Humility is what makes you a man, not ego. Humility is what makes you a man because you... That's what Jesus demonstrated. The greatest man who ever lived didn't come with ego. He came with humility. Okay, so if men are then believe, oh, my ego, my ego. No, you're deceived. That's why you're so empty. That's why there's no love in you. You get it? But, but look, when a man shows up and they say, oh, I'm being disrespected. If you feel disrespected and so you don't parent your children, you don't parent at home because you're feeling disrespected, that is a child throwing tantrums. That's a child throwing tantrums. When you feel disrespected, 
how much of it have you contributed? Because I can tell you, most of us men contribute 99% to the disrespect. One thing is this, that we forget. And it's even being taught in church. Men need respect. Women need love. That teaching is so crooked. It's not biblical. Very wrong. Very idiotic. Very demonic. Who said a man doesn't need love? The devil. That's, it's the devil teaching this stuff. The, Who said a woman doesn't need to be respected? They only quote one verse. Oh, men, women, wives respect your husbands. And they build their entire lives on that. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. You know what it says? <laughs> Some of us just need to understand that respect has got to be mutual. Respect is not only for the man. That's a lie. Respect is for the male and the female. Both. Why? Because we receive it from God. And we res both of us respect God. But God gives it to us to do it to one another. And submission is not, for, is not male or female. It's not female only. It is for both. You get it? Now, when we miss that, 1 Peter 3, 7, you know what it says? Mm -hmm. Husbands. Likewise, husbands. Love your wives. I mean, husbands. Honor your wives. Mm. We only love Ephesians 5. We don't understand that actually loving your wife means honoring her. Honor your wife. Uh-huh. And treat her as the weaker vessel. They want to be subdued. No, no, not the one to be subdued. The weaker vessel, there's something we grew up in. There's something our parents used to have called China. Yes. And China didn't just come out. This China cutlery and stuff didn't just come out anyhow. Mm. Our parents told us China was for the guests. Fine, fine China. China for the guests. Now imagine. Your own children don't eat from good stuff. You keep it for the guests. For the guests. That's dysfunctional parenting. Mm. Now, from there, we are told that you treat her as a delicate China. China. Fine China. Mm -hmm. Anytime she can break. That's how that's what it means to that what it means when the Bible says weaker vessel. Okay? Treat her in that manner. She's delicate. Now, from there, he says, why? That your prayers may not be hindered. Now, respect your wife that your prayers may not be hindered. Imagine respecting a wife has even a caveat on it. No, that's, that, that, that's where they break it and say, I am self-made. You do not know that you're going down slowly while stepping on a banana peel. Say that again. You are going down slowly, sliding down on a, ban on you, a, banana, on peel. a banana peel. How quick that acceleration is. And you don't have a clue. And you have no clue. And then, Pastor Cyrus, in all that you've been saying, one of the things that stands out critically for me is obedience. Obedience. When we start out as parents, when we start out obedient to our father. Thank you. Obedient to the core. Remember last time Brian said, uh, your children are watching you. Yes. And they are learning. Imitate me as I imitate. Christ. You are not imitating Christ. And they are imitating you in degrees that are still small. But it will be magnified when you grow older. Then you will ask me, am I your father? And I'll say, yes, you are. But. Because I, we are now clashing. I am disobeying you. But I started it with God. And I watched you. And you watched me disobey God. Now I am imitating you. And now you're imitating me. 
and I don't like what I'm saying, I begin threatening you. And it will I not begin work calling you. Because it will work until I am of age. This is what we have that most kids are only waiting to go to campus. Exactly. And we totally lose them. Now, so are the pickers. Pickers know you at church PKs, as a different... Pastor's kids, preacher's kids. Yes. Daddy is a pastor. He is different. Yes. At home, you are as disobedient as they come. They're going to pick up who, are, who I am at home. Yeah. And not who you are at church. You know, we men are full of hate. You everything to everyone at church. But I can't be everything to my own children and to my wife. That's it. And we don't see this hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. We are full of hatred. When we hate self, we pass it on. Now that is how we are parenting. Pastor Cyrus, these things are passed on. To your father it was passed on. To his father it was passed on. It was about to be passed on to you. And I broke it. And you broke it. To start a generation that honors God. God. Honors God. You love God. You would you give up anything to stay with that connection. Yes. And that is what you want to pass on to your children. And for them to pass on to their children. Yes. To start a legacy that fears God, to parent the way God has parented you from the day he made you jump out of there. What he has done in you is what you want to do to your children, in your children. Thank you. To parent them that way. So I can't parent anything far from, the, from what I have accepted, allowed, and re what has been revealed to me, the perception of who the father is to me. This is what I'm going to pass on to my children. You're very true. Yeah. The perception of who the father is to me is what I'm able to pass on. The father loves me so much, and that's why I love my children so much. The father loves me so much, and that's why I love my wife so much. Mm. The problem we have as men is that we've disconnected from the father, so now we are falling apart. Mm. Our time is running out, but I want you to remember this. Whatever it takes... When you've mentioned it, what we receive is what we're going to give. So what have you received? Nothing. So what am I going to give? Nothing. nothing. I'm passing it on. I'm passing nothing on. And then generation upon generation upon generation, I say to every man, you can break this flow. Mm -hmm. You can break this pattern. You can make a choice and say, enough. I'm not going to be the way my father was. I'm going to be a better man. God is going to parent me so I can love me and then love my wife and then love my children. Because when a woman is loved, when a mother is loved by the husband, when a wife is loved by the husband, the children develop in manners you can never imagine. They receive the love. Winfred. Your last word. We can only, only parent well if we, par if we allow ourselves to be parented by God. Thank you so much. You've had it from Winnie and we're still talking about redefining parenting. Thank you for watching. Remember, marriage is easy. Ignorance is hard. We'll see you next time. Unlocking Moreto Bliss.